Kingdom, Phylum, Class, Order, Family, Genus and Species. These are the seven known classifications we use to narrow down the animal kingdom. From the tiniest bacteria to the largest creature recorded in history. But if we look closer and analyze our ecosystems, some species might actually be invasive. And this is where the relevance of fauna comes into the great game of our ecosystem. Is being invasive can give us a bad effect in our environment? Or is this a common role in life's dice? To deepen the topic and have a full-scale study about our ecosystem, we can blend in the carbon cycle and its effects to our environment. We present to you Beyond the Fauna, Understanding Wildlife and Carbon Cycle. Biogeochemical cycle, according to Britannica, is any of the natural pathways by which essential elements of living matter are circulated. The term biogeochemical is a contradiction that refers to the consideration of the biological, geological, and chemical aspects of each cycle. Six main chemical elements that are cycled. Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and so forth. These elements are considered as the building blocks of life and are used for most important process and circumstances, such as formation of amino acid, metabolism, cell respiration, and building tissues. These elements play a huge role in maintaining the equilibrium of an ecosystem where a fauna resides in. If one is tipped off or gains more, that's the time when the other aspects of that ecosystem is disrupted. In the anthropogenic effect, we will see why this scenario occurs. Looking in the biogeochemical cycle, specifically the schnapps, carbon cycle makes a huge impact to our planet. In this day and age, one of the major sources of this carbon is the actions done by us humans. Through burning coals and fossil fuels that empowers our electric facilities, this causes carbon to increase in our atmosphere. This outcome is known as the anthropogenic effect that heavily affects Earth's condition and its ecosystem. If we were to look at it from a more scientific perspective, we can analyze Earth's balancing act through a concept in chemistry. The Chatelier's principle is an observation in chemical reactions wherein changes in temperature, volume, pressure, and concentration in the system will result in predictable and opposing changes in the system in order to achieve a new equilibrium state. It was discovered and formulated independently by Henri Le Chatelier and Carl Ferdinand Braun. The contribution of the carbon cycle as a buffer to minimize the impact of carbon dioxide on global temperatures is a great example of Le Chatelier's principle. However, an exorbitant increase in carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases caused by anthropogenic methods can upset this balance. Thus, the product, atmospheric carbon dioxide, increases in direct proportion to the new concentration of the reactant. Consequently, this shift stresses the equilibrium state of the carefully maintained ecosystems, affecting the survival of millions of species on Earth. Through the severity of greenhouse gases, pollution, and other human activities, this causes a lot of species like the fauna to be affected by their disrupted habitat, the system of their living, and even their health that is affected because of this. And sometimes, forcing them to leave their natural habitats and migrate to other places. This is where invasive species comes in. These invasive species are organisms that are not indigenous or native to a particular area. They cause great economic and environmental harm to the new area that they are introduced. They can change the food web in an ecosystem by destroying or replacing native food sources. The only direct threat of invasive species is they are preying on native species. Invasive species may be of little or no food value to wildlife. However, 
these non-native species shouldn't be generalized as invasive. In some instances, these species can be considered useful and beneficial for other species as well. According to recent studies in science, invasive plants work differently with local insects and soil microbes, introducing more carbon dioxide to the environment than native plants. In the main ecosystems with insects and the waste soil, 2.5 more carbon dioxide was emitted from the vegetation where the plant species are occupied by tropical plants relative to native plants. However, the negative effects of these invasive species affect the entire ecosystem itself. It creates an environmental stress that forces the other species to adapt to its new environment. While many introduce that invasive species can increase genetic diversity through multiple inductions or hybridization to colonize successfully in new environments, others with low genetic diversity have to persist by alternative mechanisms such as epigenetic variations, hence giving birth to those species that are genetically modified. Imagine this, a mouse that contains a gene called agouti, which is susceptible to diseases such as cancer and diabetes, will raise an offspring. In its most basic form, epigenetics is the study of changes in organisms, particularly in animals, by modification of the gene expression rather than changing the genetic code of the DNA itself. It deals with the interaction of the DNA with smaller molecules in the cells which can activate or deactivate genes. From the term itself, an epigenome of a species makes up all chemical compounds that are combined with the entirety of a faunus genome, also called the DNA, to standardize the activities of the genes within the genome itself. Take note, however, that the chemical compounds of the epigenome are not part of the DNA, but are attached or on top of it. In fact, the epi in the epigenome is derived from the Greek word above or on top. Going back to the agouti mouse, if it is given a proper diet, the epigenetic marks can be turned. However, errors in the epigenetic process can lead to modifying our own gene, which results in genetic disorders. As a conclusion, as we discussed from biogeochemical cycle, anthropological effects to invasive species and epigenetics, these components bring an impact to our surroundings, which we sometimes do intentionally harming our surroundings. Looking at this perspective, it's like a domino effect that one by one, each component triggers a sudden change to the environment once a component falls and affects another. Similar to faunas, when their habitat or life is disrupted, they are forced to adapt or leave their affected habitat or else their species will drastically decline or even worse become extinct. This is why it is significant to know these components. Knowing it helps one understand the consequences of one's own action that can lead to the endangerment of a fauna or species and the balance of the carbon cycle itself.